We've got a lot of customer requests on how to replace the roof on your truck. Today I'm at Brothers Tech Center to show you how to do that. We're looking at Sal's 1962 Chevy pickup, but if you've got a truck that has a drip rail on it, this video is going to be very important for you. It sounds like it's a big bad job, but it's pretty easy to do, so you stay tuned and I'll show you exactly how. So at first glance you might be thinking, hey the roof doesn't look that bad, um, but it's got a bunch of just weird holes in it and these big fat welds, it's got a dent right here on my crease and stuff, so uh, the time it's going to take me to grind all this stuff down, fix the patches, etc, etc. I just don't want to do it, to be honest with you. And more than likely, there's going to be rust underneath this. So I'm going to get a two birds, one stone, get this off and clean everything up underneath there and paint it so I don't have to worry about my drip rails and different things at the same time. This truck's going to last a lot longer because we're doing this roof. Now, it really doesn't take a lot of complicated tools or anything like that. Really basic stuff. First thing I'm going to start off with right here is a spot weld cutter. Now this is the easiest way to take your spot welds out on your rail here. This pin right here, that is supposed to just go right on the spot weld and stick on there and stay. But what happens a lot of times is it'll get worn down a bit and so when you try to use that it'll walk around on you too much. So you just get yourself a little drill like this and do a small pilot hole only in the first piece of metal. You don't want to bust through the second piece of metal because then you're going to have to rust that and grind it, etc., etc. If you do bust through, it's not a big deal because you can weld it up and such. So just get yourself some pilot holes going. If you can't find out where your um, spot welds are, then it's a good idea to get a little bit of a... grind on there and that'll generally make it easier for you to find. There's quite a bit of them. They're um, only about a couple of inches apart so you are going to have a quite a bit to do. Now I'm not actually going to do all the spot welds and then try to take it all off in one shot because what happens if I do that a lot of times it's going to do damage to my um, drip rails. So I'll cut all my spot welds and then I'll get a die grinder here and I'll cut the mass of the roof off. Now I don't want to dive my cutting wheel in there, I only want to take my cutting wheel and go the depth of the metal and I want to make sure that I'm not going down at a hard angle, I'm not going to hit anything underneath, I'm going at a bit of like this. I'll be able to take the mass of the roof off and then I'll just have the thin strips of metal going on and I'll be able to gently take that off without doing any damage underneath. Now, I just want to give you a couple of more helpful handy hints on taking this out. A lot of times you're not going to be able to see the spot weld on top. You can feel on the drip rail on the bottom and find them a lot of times. And then get a pilot hole, make sure it's deep enough so that when you're drilling this, it doesn't walk around on you. When you're drilling it through, again, we don't want to go through both pieces of metal. You'll notice that the teeth are about uh, the thickness of the metal. So once the teeth get buried in there, then you know you're done. Also, sometimes you'll see like a puff of dust come up or you'll hear a little bit of a pop. So there you know it went far enough. Now sometimes that little um, disc, it'll get stuck in here and you won't be able to keep drilling out. So you'll have to have a screwdriver of this on the side and pop any of those discs that get stuck in there. When you're cutting out the mass, what you want to do is, again, not bury the blade all the way down and deep. You don't want to just be up here like this trying to cut, having the um, die grinder just kind of up in the air like this. You need to have some support. So you need, want to make sure that you get your hands on here, your hand on here, and then when you cut this, you're going to be able to do it nice and steady and secure, okay? All cut out, ready to come off. If 
can see it looks pretty bad underneath. We're going to clean all of that up. We'll uh, kill the rust. We'll paint it also. But first, we've got to get the last of this um, leftover metal off right here. So just gently take it off. Make sure we're not doing any damage to anything else. Once all that's coming off, we can go ahead and get it cleaned up and pretty. So it takes a while just to get these scrap pieces of metal off. Can you imagine how hard it would be if the roof was still on there and you had to go back and re-drill and all that kind of stuff? Another bad thing about it is that you'd feel inclined to put a screwdriver in here and go ahead and try to pop it off this way and then you'd bend all these rain gutters. So take the a little bit of extra time of cutting the mass off first and then gently removing what's left. And every little place you had a spot weld, you're going to have leftover metal. You're going to need to grind those down. And it's quite possible that you're going to have holes that are going to be needed to be welded up. It's going to be a lot easier to weld these from the top than it is to climb in the cab and try to weld upside down. So take care of all the repairs that are going to be necessary. Grind off all the extra metal. Uh, make sure that these drip rails right here, that what's left of them is all nice and straight. Get all this cleaned up and painted. And then we will um, see what comes next. Okay, so here it had some sound deadening on it, and you can see when we took that off, this was just bare metal when they made it at the factory. No paint, no nothing. So we're really going to have to uh, pay attention to our prep now. It's a real shame if you get your roof on here and then you get rust underneath this. It's going to be a drag. So make sure you take your time here. Different things I'm using is just regular old flap grinding wheels. These are just um, uh, pieces of sandpaper glued together and laid down. It's really good for keeping heat down and it sands really fast. Now this right here, this is a hard wheel and this is really good for like maybe getting nooks and crannies that your flap wheel is not going to be able to get in there. So I'll use combinations of things like that. I'll use different um, wire wheels to get into different nooks and crannies. You might have to get some um, wire uh, brushes to get into here. But really take your time in this because this is where the brass tacks takes place before you even put the roof back on. Uh, go ahead and like I said, weld up any of the holes that you got. When you're welding up really large holes like this, just find yourself a fender washer. They're relatively thin, about the same as the metal here, and you can just simply trim it down until it fits in the hole and there's going to be less welding. Less welding is less heat. Heat is your enemy in this. It'll warp your metal and cause kinds of all kinds of problems. So make sure that you're taking your time now and then once you've got this as clean as you can possibly get it. Other things that I'll do sometimes is there are um, rust cleaners out there. You can go ahead and bathe this all down and get off some of the minor rust. They'll still have rust left over there, especially in the nooks and crannies. So then I'll take something like this. You don't have to use this, but something like this that it's going to kill the rust, keep it from coming back. After I've done all that, I'm going to paint it too. I'll also be painting the um, inside of the roof before I put it back on. Now it comes with a really tough 
coating that will last a long time, but I like to just paint it just to be on the safe side and really make sure I don't have to do this repair again. Another thing that you'll um, notice a lot of times is that it has all this uh, goop in here. It has weather stripping kind of um, gawking in there. And uh, I'll show you what we're going to do on that a little bit later. I've got a couple of different things that I like to do. And, uh, well, I'm just going to keep on rocking, so you stay tuned and see what comes up next. We're all painted up. Now, when I paint, I like to use gloss because water won't stick that as much as it will a satin or a matted finish. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make sure all my um, drip rails are nice and straight. I'm going to put some sound deadening on it. Now, sound deadening, I know a lot of times you'll like to see guys, they'll just cover the entire thing. Uh, and I understand that, but the deal is, is that you can use just one square inch to deaden one square foot. So covering this entire thing might be a bit of overkill. Another problem that happens if you have grooves like this and you put that down there, uh, the sound deadening, moisture can get trapped in there and then you can get rush right here. So if you were to put the sound deadening on there, you'd really want to make sure that you jam it into these grooves so no air pockets get in there, no moisture pockets get in there, and no rust comes back to haunt you. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut this up. I'll go ahead and place it around the roof strategically. Then I'll go ahead and start trial fitting my roof on and see how it looks. All right, so I've just put this on. It's already fitting like a glove. There's these two little tabs right here that have the holes in them. They're just for them. They're for the factory, so when they're painting it and everything. Um, all I got to do is grind those off. This is going to fit right in here. And then what I'm going to do is start doing some uh, rosette welds on there. Now, what that is, is I'll be drilling through the first piece of metal, the roof right here. And I want to drill about halfway through the second piece of metal, the cab. And then I'll go ahead and weld it up. I'll show you what that looks like in just a minute. I've taken quite a bit of time and I've made sure that I've got it exactly where I want it. I don't want to have it too far left, right, etc. I'm making sure I've got a nice even gap as it were all the way around this edge here. Now I'm ready to weld. So what I'm going to be doing here is drilling through the first piece of metal and just barely into the second. So I'm using a fairly small drill bit here. It's only about a quarter of an inch. So that's nice there. I'll take a little wire wheel and I'll clean it off a little bit. And you need really, for a good weld, you need clean metal. So um, this is still a little bit dirty by some people's standards. So what I'll do is I'll turn up my argon and my heat just a little bit to help me get this weld all the way through and uh, nice and secure. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to start welding on the second piece of metal, the cab, right in the middle. And I want to get a weld going there, and then I'll expand that weld up and fill up the hole. If I just try to fill up the hole, as it were, it may not get a good weld to your second piece of metal, your cap. So get that weld first, and then work your way out. So when you're done, it should be looking something like that. Now I just did this right here as an example so the camera could see it well, but what I generally do is start from the center and work my way out. Now the reason we're doing that is if I was to weld the left and right side secure and I had some sort of bow going on here, I wouldn't be able to flatten that out. But now I can flatten it out and I can work it to the edge and then if there's any gap there, they'll go ahead and bow down nice and even, won't give me a problem. Normally also I use more clamps on this. Uh, I just happen to be a little short-handed today. I've got one on the front so that I make sure it's not going anywhere. And now I can just simply use these two clamps to go ahead and uh, drill and weld, drill and weld. I'll do it about every three inches or so and um, then uh, take care of it all the way around. So it's going to be quite a few welds. I'm not going to bore you to death with all of that. The last thing I like to talk about is the uh, caulking that you normally see in here. 
So I don't really like that stuff because it's, it's kind of wet and gooey and technically speaking what happens is you put it in there and then you shoot the paint on top. And, but the problem is if you're wet sanding and coloring and you're buffing you might hit it and then it you know, makes it look ugly. So what I generally like to do is actually put body filler in here and just put it in with my finger and really jam it in and fill any cracks and things like that. Now you still could quite possibly get a slight crack here where this um, edge is, but your caulking can do the same exact thing. So I just personally prefer to put my filler in there, sand it all down and paint it as pretty as everything else. I'll spend as much attention to detail in this rain gutter as I will on everything else. And I suggest you do too, because the devil is in the details and the devil spends a lot of time in these rain gutters. My name is David Welch. I'm at Brothers Tech Center every single Tuesday, but you already knew that, didn't you? Because you subscribe to the channel and you check out our Facebook and Instagram. So next Tuesday, I'll be back. We'll see you all then.